Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over a 2020 Dodge Challenger RT with the manual transmission. So, as always, we're gonna do a quick walk around on the car, then we're gonna take it out and see how it drives. A huge shout out and thank you to the Larry Schmiller Dodge Ram here in Provo for providing us with the Challenger. Check out the inventory in the link below if you're in the market for a new Dodge, Ram, Jeep, or Chrysler. Let's get in the video. Under the hood here, we have a naturally aspirated 5.7 liter Hemi V8 that goes through a six-speed manual transmission. Fuel economy is 15 around town and 23 on the highway with power outputs being 375 horsepower and then 410 pound-feet of torque. Now let's go over things on the front end of the Challenger RT. So the little venting there on the hood, the hood scoop, that is a newer addition. I definitely love it. They did steal it from the uh, older SRTs. But coming down below, you do get the halo headlights with the little rings. And then obviously you got the little RT badge right there. Yes, you're supposed to uh, take those off, but it's a nice little uh, bit of protection until the first owner picks up the car. And then notice that there are little fog lights just at the top of the front splitter. But just like all the other Challengers, this has that like distinct old school muscle car aesthetic. Now let's come to the side here. We've got two 45 millimeter tires on 20 inch rims and then notice that they are in the dark gray color. So it's very similar to the kind of like granite crystal color in terms of the finish. And then we do get the little Hemi badging right there on the side. And then notice that the mirrors body colored matches the rest of the car. But here's just your full side angle on the Challenger RT. Here's the key fob on the RT. You've got a couple functions. You have the unlock function, the lock, and then you press this and that'll open up the trunk. Now there is no remote start and that's because it does have a manual transmission. But if we come back to the rear here, we can pick up the trunk lid and then notice that there is a ton of space back here. That's one of the biggest benefits of the Challenger compared to like a Mustang or Camaro is you do get a ton of space in the trunk and then in the interior, which we'll go over that momentarily. But moving this over, so you can see there's this little strap kind of hidden right there. You pick that up and then this will reveal the subwoofer with the Harman Kardon sound system. And then you do have a little fix a flat kit, all that kind of stuff. So that's everything from underneath there. And let's pop to the rest of the exterior. Looking here at the rest of the back of the Challenger, I've got the LED lights on so you guys can see those. But we can see right here, we've got the little spoiler here in the back. Backup camera is integrated into the center of it. I've always loved these LED lights. They just look really cool, especially at nighttime. And then you've got the parking sensors at the bottom. And then we've got the exhaust tips, which yes, there will be an exhaust clip a little bit later in the video, but here is your three quarters angle. And if you're wondering why everything's blacked out on the car, this particular one has the black top package. Now we do have keyless entry, so one touch to lock it. And then all I have to do is put my hand on the back of the door handle and that will unlock the Challenger. Now here is the door panel here in the front. Now on this one, since this is kind of like a more basic interior, you're not gonna have like all the nice stuff. So like the nicer interior ones will have like the nice stitching on it for 2020. Whereas these base models, they don't really have that upgrade obviously, but you still get kind of like the nice leather and stitching here down below, but then you get the cloth trim right there. Now I've popped in the back seat of a million Challengers, so I'm not going to do that today. I'm just gonna show you guys the back seats with the cloth trim so you guys can see what that looks like. There is everything in the rear. You get a little armrest, leg room's good, headroom is pretty good, especially for a muscle car. This definitely has the most room compared to like the Camaro and the Mustang. Now here's a quick look at the seats here in the front. They've got nice bolsters on them. You do have the power adjustments on the side of the seat, but you can notice that this part is manual. The one thing I've always liked about the Challenger is the fact that the pedals always look nice pretty much in every single package. And then we do have the light controls right here on that part. And then the steering wheel is gonna be manually adjusted there's little rocker panels on the back of the steering wheel so you guys can see what those look like but here is one more look before we pop inside now to start the challenger you do have to uh, push the clutch in so once that's pressed in just push the push start you gotta kind of hold it down and then it'll pop to life obviously make sure you're in a neutral or you keep your foot in the clutch because obviously if you release it then the car will stall but we are in neutral so we are Fine. Here is the steering wheel on this Challenger RT. Now zooming in, you've got the cruise control on the one side, you've got the controls for the center stack on the other side, and you've got like your voice command and phone controls right there. Nice perforations here, so it's kind of grippier in there, and then it's smoother at the top and at the bottom as well. And then you've got the stock for your turn signal, and then also the windshield 
wipers. But other than that, I like the whole steering wheel setup. I like the feel of it, and I think it's a good look. Here is our center gauge cluster, and sorry about the glare, but we've got the RPMs on that side, and that's gonna be important since this is a manual. And then you've got the speed on the other side, and then right here in the center, you've got a couple different menus. I always like the little performance, so you can see like different performance on the vehicle. But yeah, you've got a bunch of these different menus you can basically scroll through. Let's see what the fuel economy is right now. 14.4, but I mean, it only has 29 miles, so it doesn't really matter, but yeah, there's the uh, little center stack for you. Got these two giant vents on the sides of the infotainment system. Now, to pop it into reverse, you do have to push the clutch in, obviously, and then it is over, and then all the way up, backup camera is going to pop in there's your resolution then you can see the little trajectory lines that'll pop on once you turn the backup camera on and then just make sure that you are uh, back in neutral because what i've noticed is if you go to reverse and you pull it back sometimes you'll pull it back into fourth sometimes sixth gear so just make sure you are in neutral before you release your foot from the clutch i know it seems simple but this transmission selector is just a little bit weird now the rest of the infotainment system is actually really good. You've got the climate controls in this one, even though it's a, kind of like a base model interior, has dual zone climate in it. And then this one also comes with navigation as well. We have the infotainment system, pretty easy to use. And that's all for that. Now down here in this little area, you've got like the controls for the radio and then you have the different modes. So you got like your sport mode, you can press it on and I'm not sure if I'm going to use that today because it did uh, rain and snow a little bit, so that would be kind of <laughs> scary. And then obviously you got your super track pack, which will show you your different drive mode setups. It does have launch control. If you're wondering what the launch control does, since this does have a manual transmission, all it does is hold the RPM. So if you set it at, let's say, 1500 RPMs, when you floor the gas pedal all the way down, it'll just hold it at 1500 RPMs with the launch control. And then again, here's that shifter. Now in terms of the throws on it, it's really notchy into the gears. The throws are kind of weird. It would take a second to get used to, but I would say it's a pretty good manual transmission in general. The throws are kind of on the longer side. And like I said, just like the feel into each gear is a little bit strange. I have a couple cup holders for added practicality. And then you got the center console lined with felt. And then notice that there are a couple little USBs and a 12 volt. Now, again, you don't get that nice like stitching on the dash, which is on the upgraded trims because this is a base model, but that's okay. Opening up the glove box, you get felt again, and then you guys can see just how much storage space there is in the glove box. Top, we've got the little sunglass holder on this, and then you have the lights as well, and then no sunroof, sadly, but it is a black headliner, which I like because it matches the bottom of the interior. Here's our window sticker. So you guys have the base MSRP right there, and then you can see the, obviously the color and the seats and all that, but this is before any options. Now this one does have a couple options. So coming down here, you can see that we've got the black top package, and then you can see a couple other packages as well. That sound system is pretty pricey, just saying. But here is the total MSRP on this particular Challenger RT. That all being said, let's take it out and see how it drives. Let's quickly talk about visibility before we set off here in the Challenger RT with the six speed manual. So visibility over the hood, it's really easy to see out of. That scoop does kind of make things a little bit different, but it's not bad by any means. And then you can see visibility through the mirror and then note there is a little triangle. It's got blind spot monitoring. There is your other mirror. And then here is visibility throughout the rear of this particular Challenger. That all being said, well, Let's set off. I'm setting off here in the Challenger RT with the six speed manual. And I want to spend quite a bit of time on the drive portion with this particular video because I really want to compare this to the eight speed automatic and see if it's worth it to get this over the eight speed automatic. Now I know a lot of like die hard manual transmission fans are going to be like, yes, of course, always get the manual. But there's a lot of new cars where that isn't always the case. And this actually might be one of those cars where the automatic transmission is not only quicker shifting, which I mean, that's just a numbers thing, but it's just the better one to drive, just like all around, not only from just like a feel perspective, but just how it drives, just everything about it is actually 
potentially better than the manual transmission. So I am first setting off here in the Challenger now, well, I mean, setting off on the road to be exact. And going through the gears, it's actually pretty easy to go from gear to gear with the car. I mean, no issues whatsoever there. Like I said, when I was first driving it, it kind of felt weird, but now actually being on the road, it's not bad at all going through the gears. It doesn't feel weird um, on the transmission itself. Now the steering, yeah, it's really good. So it's actually pretty heavy. It's got like a weightedness to it. And in terms of the precision, I mean, it's as expected. It's just like any of the other Challengers. So it's a little bit more precise than like an average vehicle, but it's not like crazy sports car quick precise. Um, I would kind of put it, like I said, just a little bit above average. And in terms of the rev matching, it's pretty good. And when I, by the way, guys, when I say rev matching, I don't mean that it has auto um, rev, like auto blip is what a lot of manufacturers will call it or auto rev matching. What I mean is, right, when you go from one gear to another and you're shifting it yourself and you have to rev match yourself, like how good does it do that? Now we're gonna get our first little acceleration here. Wow, it's actually gripping really well. So obviously it rained and snowed a little bit today. Now I didn't get like full throttle there, but I mean, I was like, I would say I was like 75, 80% and I didn't get like any crazy fish tailing or anything like that. So I'm, I'm impressed. However, I know that if I like went full throttle, I, I may have ended up into uh, the curb. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, no, it actually grips a lot better than I expected in weather conditions like this. It's, it's really good. And the acceleration, I feel like it's more than enough power. It has so much torque, like it just punches right off the line that it's just really nice. And now that I'm getting up into a higher gear here, it's pretty quiet. You do hear, you still do hear the exhaust. It's a, it's a nice V8 rumble, but it's actually pretty quiet and comfortable. Like if I go all the way up into six gear, you just hear like a slight rumble, but it's, it's not bad at all. Like it's really good. This is a comfortable car. And from the ride quality perspective, which I haven't talked about a bunch, it's, it's okay. It's not the smoothest definitely not the smoothest but it's it's smooth enough that you could you could daily drive it and I mean it's comfortable enough to basically be okay with if that makes sense now I think the most important part of this video is to answer the question should you get this over the 8-speed automatic transmission and I guess if you guys want the short and dirty answer I don't think so. I think that the 8-speed automatic transmission is a little bit of a better transmission. No, it's not as engaging as this manual transmission is from just like a fun perspective. And yeah, that rev matching is good. Like it's just, it's easy to blip the throttle and get to the RPMs that you want to get to. Um, but continuing on with what I was saying, I just, I don't think this transmission's superior. I am a lover of manual transmissions. By the way, let's get acceleration. Man, I miss having a muscle car, but I love manual transmissions and I just feel like the eight speed is just so much better. It shifts so quick and this whole setup, it's okay, but it's not like a great manual transmission in my opinion. I think that Dodge, when they went to the eight speed, I think that was the right choice and I just think it's a better transmission. Now, if you like are a die-hard manual transmission lover, this is a fun manual transmission muscle car. It has a heavy clutch. It has a pretty interesting shifter. I like the feel on the shifter, like the like little ball at the top. It's solid. However, if you're just looking to get into a muscle car, like you've never really owned a muscle car, so you're just like looking to get into one in the market for the first time, I would recommend starting out with the eight-speed automatic. If you absolutely hate it, yeah, go to the manual. But I would recommend starting out the 8-speed automatic because it gets a little bit better fuel economy. It's easier on a daily basis. And it's just, it's not weird. I don't know how to explain it. Like, you guys really, you have to drive this car to really understand this transmission. There's nothing wrong with it. It just, it feels weird. That's, that's the best way for me to describe it, is it just feels weird. That is gonna sum things up for our video on the 2020 Challenger RT with the six-speed manual. 
Again, as always, a huge shout out and thank you to the Lurch Miller Dodge Ram Jeep Chrysler here in Provo for providing us with the Challenger. Check out their inventory in the link below if you're in the market for a new car. I will see all of you in that next video.